of full service radio. Full service radio. Full service. Full service. Full service. Full service radio. Hey, 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 everyone. Happy Wednesday. It's Melissa, and you are tuning into the Edible Activist Podcast. As you know, or as you may not know, actually, this show highlights black and brown edible activists in the fooding farming space. And not that kind of edible some of you guys are probably thinking about, but we're talking about food and food activism, people, and stories that are bringing us back to the land. As the creator of Food Talks DC, I travel the DC area and beyond to document personal food journeys and perspectives from everyday people on topics related to health, tradition, environment, culture, and so much more. Every week, I will bring in a special guest to hear their personal food journey firsthand and learn how they are channeling edible activism in the DC area. We don't promote people, we tell stories and empower communities. So today, we're actually back at it, me and Lita. 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 <laughs> My name is Lita. Um, last week, we, we did, we launched, um, I guess launch is the correct word, part one yeah. of our, our photo series um, for Detroit. Shout out to the D. the D. And for those who this might be your first time tuning in, um, this you may not be familiar with the work that I do, who I am. Let me just give you a little bit of background. So um, I'm Melissa, and this is my podcast. And I have a platform called Food Talks DC, which creates space for people of color um, to share our food narratives. And back in June, I launched a Kickstarter um, called the Edible Activist Tour Campaign Movement. That's all those in one. And essentially, I did that because um, I, well, let me actually back up before then. When I got started in this work um, in the food space, which I had no idea that I'd be in, uh, be in at all. Okay, I'm a corporate event planner by trade. Let me just remind people. Um, and once I started um, getting my, my feet into the food space and just meeting all, just all these really like great people, this one gentleman um, in particular started calling me an edible activist. And I thought that was so funny. And just because of the work that I was doing and meeting with people, and you know, I was all about sustainable agriculture. I was all about the soils. I was I, I would actually even do events to raise awareness about um, agriculture because I was just really rooted in this work. And so I always knew that I wanted to take that term and like do something with it. And so I was thinking about maybe like a product line or you know, um, let me just create some paraphernalia. And I said, no, it's so much more to to the word. And I wanted to create like a whole movement behind it. So. Fast forward, maybe like a year or two or maybe even three. Oh my gosh, my, my memory is so crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I decided to, I was defining what an, an edible activist was. And I started looking at those around me who were, you know, doing the work in the food space as edible activists. Um, and at first, you know, I was just like, listen, edible activists is anyone, you know, who's using food and healthy food, you know, to create viable communities, to grow their own food. But really, you know, as I'm tra- still trekking along, along in this journey, you can define that however you like, you know, whatever you're doing in the food space, um, the meditative space, the healing space space, I deem you all as edible activists. And um, I like the term edible um, because it activism is, like I said before, and I say this over and over again, it can be really polarizing. So if you're not working for a nonprofit organization, if you're not marching in protests, you know, you think that you're not doing the work, that's not the case. Maybe you're at home and you have a small patio and you're growing food and, you know, you're on this path to um, to, to self-reliance, you know, and just really, you know, sustaining yourself by just growing. Um, maybe you're taking small steps to, you know, support your local farm, your, your local farmer. I mean, last summer I bought all my produce from one farmer, Jennifer, Jennifer Mm Lumpkin, shout out. Um, So just small things like that. So it's, it really is a a term that can be defined however you like um, in the space that you're creating in the space that you're in. And so with that said, I said, you know what, I really want to I've always wanted to travel from city to city and just meet with people, continue to do the work that I do and expand Food Talks DC. And I said, I am going to start the Edible Activist Tour and Campaign 
and movement again all those in one guys I'm still learning I'm still defining stuff and so I did that I I set out to um, raise some money and Detroit was a place that I visited last year. Um, I met with some really great people in the food and farming space. And I said, you know what? I want to kick this off by going back to Detroit. So that's what I did. So I did the Kickstarter. It was very successful. Shout out to my backers who made it happen. Raised a little bit more than I had intended. And so I was able to, uh, me and Lita actually just recently came back from Philly. So we did a very short stop in Philly, met, met with some great folks. And we have so much more to do. Yes, we do. <laughs> and we also need some more money. <laughs> yes. Amen to that. Okay. So the purpose of this show, um, and so yeah, so check me out on oh, I'm I have a website, www.foodtalksdc.com. I'm on Instagram at Food Talks DC, Twitter, Facebook. I'm more active on Instagram and Facebook. And so um, follow along, DM me, send me an email, Melissa at goodsoilevents.com. Um, I am very responsive. If you want to learn more about this movement um, and the work that we're doing, holler at me. Any partnerships you want to collab, like just ask me a question. Like, I'm a nice person, you know. So anyway, in it to win it. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so as I said before, we started, we kicked off last week with our part one of our photo series for Detroit and just sharing all the, the wonderful stories and perspectives and anecdotes from those we met Um and this wonderful city. And so now we're continuing the conversations. You know, I thought it would be, I thought it was imperative for us to, you know, set aside um, uh, the, the, these podcasts, the last two podcasts to talk about Detroit, just all the great people we met and just yeah. what we pulled from it. And I don't know about you, Lita, like as I, as I started sharing these stories, I was like, these are so rich. Yeah. I mean, rich in a whole nother way, you know, like, like rich, very. And it was extremely important to me uh, to be able to capture that. Like, I was very intentional in making sure that I stayed true to that because it just I would be taking something away from it if it was just a, a photo of a person like I wanted to capture, you know, the essence of you know, your movement and their story and kind of just like mesh it all into one. And I, I think that I really, I was able to do that. And it you was, did the daggone man. thing. I look at those photos and I'm like, damn, Lisa <laughs> did that. <laughs> just the way you capture people, yeah. you know, in, in, in their essence and um, just in their space. Like I just loved it. So, um, a couple of more people, a few more people I definitely want to highlight on this show. Um, and actually, one I know would be your favorite. All of them were our favorites. Yeah. But I know this one is really one of your favorites because you love Ginger. Yeah. And remember Nikki from Ginger's Tea? Yeah, she was dope, Nikki's man. Ginger Tea. And we were at Easter Market. For those who are not familiar with Detroit, they have an area, Easter what Market. they call Easter Market. Yeah. Um, and it is really a phenomenal space and they have a farmer's market there I think a few times a week mm -hmm. and we were actually there meeting with another lovely um, woman who is a farmer who I don't remember if we talked about last week but we'll talk about her again like yeah. today and so uh, Mary Lou shout out to Mary Lou mm -hmm. um, and we were walking around and we stumbled upon ginger tea yeah. And that's where we met Nikki, who is the founder and creator. And it's a family owned business. And we were like, we're here, like just meeting with people and talking to people mm -hmm. about like that was very stories. organic. That it was so that, organic. Um, and you meeting, were happy that you found Ginger. Man, because like Ginger <laughs> has been like one of those things that has just essentially changed my life when I was going through um, my my first flare up and my my stomach crisis. Like that was the one thing that I could use to 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 help alleviate some of that. And so mm -hmm. it's just for me, ginger is like is everything. It's, and you know what? And that that when we first sat down with Nikki, I think one of the things she said she was like, I fell in love with ginger. Yeah, in like 1997, she was like, I yeah, fell in love. And I, I think it was her it. parents who introduced her to ginger. She didn't know what this big fibrous root was. Yeah. She was like, what is that? Yeah. And then she just started creating. Mm -hmm. And I think the, 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 um, 
dynamic part of her story is that it wasn't like she she went in Mm -hmm. for her business she really did i mean the challenges that she faced being in detroit and where she could set up and places where she got kicked out of yeah y'all she she really went through it and she even had a moment of where she was just like i'm done like i can't i cannot do this and that like i connected with that so much because i've Eat, you know, in my Girl, I'm own, quit every day, every day I quit. God, like you know, <laughs> with this, you know, the photography journey that I've been on. Um, so, for those of you that don't know, I am self-taught, and I, you know, it's been while it's been very rewarding, it's also been very difficult. And I, you know, I had a couple of moments where I was just like, "Fuck this!" Like I can't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. It's not sustaining you know, my life. I I can't take care of my children. Yes, I'm creating, but it's like, what am I doing? You know, but I was just like, I have to keep doing this because it's, it's therapeutic. I I just like, I have to keep going. And that's the part that I really connected with her because she realized like, I have to keep, I have to keep creating. I'm helping people. I'm healing people. And like her, she oh was God, healing her juice people. Is inc- it's incredible. Oh, it's really good. It but is not so only was good. she healing people, she was healing. She le- it, and unintentionally, like she leveraged her product, her entrepreneurial skill set, um, what she was creating to help those around her. Yeah. She would say, like, moms would come to her and say, "You know what? My son is getting in trouble. I need something for him to do." Da, da, da. She was creating jobs, yeah. positions. Everything. Everything. And when she and the point when she when she kept pushing, yeah. like literally pushing guys, because she was literally, literally pushing her ginger in a baby stroller because she didn't have a car. Yep. Yeah. And people would laugh at it's her. It's real. And it, be like, it's real. You know, baby in that stroller. She did have a baby in that stroller. That was it, her that baby. That was her baby. It's I'm telling you, like so, it just hit so close many to home, parts right? of that. I was just like you know, because I've had those moments where I had to do a shoot and bring all this stuff with me. Yes. And I'm like, and pack, I have witnessed that. I'm like packed Ooh. tight in a lift, like, because I don't have a car. I, I can't afford a car. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so I've had those moments of, you know, just feeling like completely exhausted. But I like I know that there's work yeah. to be done. You know, so yeah. Shout out to Nikki. Shout out Much to love. Nikki. Like you're like she was such a like like down to earth yeah. she sat there she was you know putting the stickers the labels yeah. on her bottles and but she again she is she has gone through a lot of challenges mm-hmm. in detroit um you know with where she used to try to set up her market so there was just a lot of like quote-unquote fake red tape yeah. and bureaucracy and you know honestly just a lot of <laughs> racism yeah. you know and just certain spaces she would get kicked out of and yeah. but anyway all love to Nikki. Yeah, Shout all love out to, to Nikki. Nikki. Can't wait to yeah. visit her again. Wait, can you? What, did she say that her her tea is sold at Whole Foods? Like, can you find it at Whole Foods? I I know at one point she said it was sold at Whole Foods. It's okay. actually sold in several places. Yeah, in and out of south outside of Detroit, Detroit if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah. So um, I don't remember, but she did mention Whole Foods. I don't know if it's yeah. still there. Okay. Anyway, she's doing the daggone thing yeah. in Whole Foods now. Whole Foods, like she I, and I love yeah. her. I love her. Yeah. Um, and Mary Lou. Oh man. So Mary that Lou, lady. Oh. I know Mary Lou is actually who we were at Eastern Market to t- speak with yeah and to antonio of southwest grows detroit who made that connection yeah and so when we were at it was when we went to eastern market to speak with mary lou that's when we had bumped into nikki but um prior to coming to eastern market antonio um took us to one of mary lou's um gardens farms mm. which is phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal so look out for that for that um that story yeah. and those photos i oh. mean she is growing everything but guess what y'all like she has no like no experience, no experience. like none how long it took her what like five years to get everything up and running if that if that and yeah. check this out mary lou is from mexico yeah <sighs> yeah tell them the backstory backstory yo she came Man. over here with three dollars yeah and I think four four kids. kids. Okay. 
she worked for I want to say it was Ford um, and she got laid off mm-hmm. I think she got laid off a couple times yeah and then I think after she kept getting laid off she was like you know what this is the final straw like this is yeah. it she was like I gotta do something else mm-hmm. to sustain my family but she just started growing like again yeah. yeah like Lita said she didn't have any prior experience she just started like growing yeah. tomato plants and she was like, you know what? I can make money off of this. I can do this. I yep. can do this. I can do this. And she, her spirit, it is just so humbling. It is. And her produce is beautiful. Oh and it's like her, gosh. it's like her produce translates into her spirit. Yes. It's like an energy. It's like an awesome energy exchange. Oh That's the best way that I can you describe it. Because right when I was taking pictures of her stuff, I'm like, this is like stuff that you would see like in a food magazine. Yes. You know? It's all organic, no it's, chemicals. It's gorgeous. All with love. Mm-hmm. You know, she said she she made me laugh. She was like, you know, I just I go out, I talk to my plants, you know. She was yep. like, people laugh at me. I said, There's nothing to laugh about. Like you're talking to nature. Yeah. And just so humble. Just, oh, I I just feel her spirit like with me now. You know, she just her smile just like lit up. Yeah. You know, the whole atmosphere. Absolutely. And absolutely. She D- Diamante. I'm probably botching the name up. Farms, I believe. Diamante Farms. I think that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Um, but she's out in Detroit. Lovely, lovely. And she got a lot of support from um, the Eastern Market, the folks who run the farmer's market. East, the, the folks who run, I, I can talk, guys. The people <laughs> who run the market, the farmer's market at Eastern Market, um, she got a lot of support from them. And so um, her sales had actually even doubled tripled something to that effect like a year or two afterwards so Mm -hmm. i am just like those stories make me so 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 happy to see they can be grounded man they can be so grounded yeah and she came with like pennies in her pocket Mm -hmm. to detroit yeah i mean you know when people say that they can't do something it's like yes Yes, you you can. can you know for me, I I can definitely connect with this because I'm a single parent, and it's like, when do you? It's like when you face times like that. It's like, what are you gonna do next? Yeah, and you just have to do what you have to do. Like I bought my my camera on credit because I was like, I'm gonna do something that I absolutely love, mm-hmm. um, not thinking that it was gonna take me to where I am now. Right. And I tell people all the time, like, you just you you just have to find a way. I have a friend that is going through a really hard time. And she was telling me, like, she's really into the whole holistic lifestyle. And she really appreciates kind of what um, cannabis has has done for her in terms mm-hmm. of her own personal healing. I was mm-hmm. like, girl, why don't you start growing? Yeah. You know, like there's very few women that are in the space of 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 growing a billion you know, dollar industry. A billion dollar industry. And we y'all. have a corner. We don't. We barely. We have barely. A we barely have like a chip of that. Yeah, okay. Same. And I was like, you. You know, not that this has to do with anything, but it's just the world that we live in. She's white, mm-hmm. and I was like, you. Well, I, I mean, well, it does have a lot to do with things, but. If you, if you, you know, if you do that, you can use your, you can use your privilege. I was just very honest with her. I was like, you can use your privilege to, to make moves. And she has black children. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you, you know, you going through this hard time that you're going Mm -hmm. through now and being able to use this as your backstory, Mm -hmm. you will be healing so many other people in so many other ways other than what your, your product is. And she was like, yeah, I was like, you know, if you, if you need me, I'm here. Like, I don't, I don't know much, but I know a little bit, you know? So it's like, and, and just, you know, just going to Detroit and like all these other places, like I've been able to like, take something away from each of these stories that I now can contribute to somebody else. So much love. Right on. Yeah. Right on. 
Um, Melissa here with the Edible Activist Podcast. We are with Lita, Lita Harrison, Lita. Um, photographer, visual artist, and we're most recently went to Detroit back in September, and um, we are just sharing what we pull from that experience and um, some of the stories that we've been sharing on our platform, mm-hmm. um, people in the growing space. So um, we're actually going to take a quick break. And we're going to come back and chat up a little bit more. And yeah. Awesome. See you in a few. All right. here with the edible activist podcast broadcasting live at the line hotel dc um i am sitting here with lita harrison um and myself of course hey and um we are chatting detroit so for those who are just tuning in um we both set out for detroit back in september to kick off my edible activist um tour movement campaign all that good stuff to meet with people of color in the food and farming space in detroit um is one of my favorite cities and filled with so much rich black history mm-hmm. and it I, I just that was a place that I definitely had to go back to yeah, so for we sure. were just sharing some of what we pulled from our travels our experience you know how it has what it has taught us um how it healed us in some respects absolutely how we need to go back like tomorrow <laughs> absolutely okay um and that song that was just played which is actually lita's request was a uh, detroit artist black yeah, milk black milk he's dope yeah he is i he's, just found him on title <laughs> he is phenomenal actually i have been following him for quite some time and um i didn't even realize that he was from Detroit That's until funny. I was going through the videos. I was like, you know, vibing out to his music. And I was like, let me let me just look up his information because I had like a just a small feeling. I was like, there's something with this dude. Yeah. And sure enough, he's from Detroit. Uh. <laughs> Let me tell y'all, we love Detroit. <laughs> do. I don't care who rolls their eyes about it. I like Detroit. I'm t- somebody in my family has to be from like. There's there's a reason why yeah, I'm so connected, connected with Detroit. To it, yeah. I've always wanted to go to Detroit even before I had went for a long time. It was like one of the cities I want to visit the D. Absolutely. So, um, all right. So a few other people who we connected with in Detroit. Um, oh, Shane Bernardo. Oh, Shane. We, man. What I loved most I'm about. I'm going through his videos right now. I know. <laughs> What I loved most about our meetup with Shane was that originally, and I think I said this in the last podcast, I don't remember, forgive my memory, guys. Mm -hmm. Um, We were supposed to go to his garden at his house. Yeah. And so Lita was actually celebrating her birthday in Detroit. And her only request was to go to Dilla's Delight. Yeah. Because she wanted those donuts. And we ate all the vegan donuts, guys. And when I say we we ate all of them, we we bought all of them. them. We bought them out. We bought them out. (laughs) And so, to our surprise, Shane comes walking down the sidewalk into Dilla's Delight. And um, Dilla's niece actually was there. Yeah. And she allowed us to sit there and talk and yeah, record. That and was dope. It was really dope. And so, Shane is an amazing, gosh, I can't, there's really no title for him. Like, there really isn't. Like, he does a lot. He's a, he is a grower. Um, he is an activist in his very own right. Yeah. Um, you know, he does a lot of like foundational work. Mm-hmm. He's a speaker. Um, he is a connector. Yeah. And so, you know, he is, you know, his, he, he and his family, they're from the Philippines. And so a lot of his work is in the diaspora. Yeah. Um, and just really, you know, holding on to, you know, those roots and just us as individuals just reconnecting with ourselves through food through conversation yeah um and doing internal 
um, healing work that needs to be done. And so check him out. I think he's Philip. I can't remember his name. Actually, just hit me up on Instagram because he his name is it's a, it's, yeah. it's a little challenging to, to, to spell out. I don't remember it right now. Yeah. Lita, if you find it, just let them know. But I mean, he is incredible. Like, so everything that we are discussing now, you can definitely find on um on uh, Melissa's um, Instagram platform, Food Talks DC. Food Talks DC, and I'll you know I'll post obviously a different perspective, um, but you can also find my work on Instagram mm-hmm. at Lark dot um, and I'm just like I'm really excited to to be able to share more of my stuff on there because it's yeah. Man. One thing that really struck a chord for the both of us though when we were talking to Shane. Um, and I was prompted to ask him this question because after meeting with Antonio, um, you know, Antonio just told me about all like the great work that had been done over the summertime at Southwest, Southwest Grows Detroit. Mm -hmm. And, um, there was a lot of youth involved in the farming and growing, which I thought was amazing. And Mm -hmm. so I was just curious if Shane was, you know, in that same space of working with youth and just really, you know, you know, continuing to work with them and connect them and, you know, farming, growing, all that other good stuff. And he hit us with a whole nother revelation of the type of youth work that he does. And we were sitting there like, like just really? in awe with our jaws, like really? to the floor, like, really, really? What? <laughs> But you got to go visit our pages to go find out what he said. <laughs> there it is. There but it he's, is. He's really deep. He's he's a dope person. Um, but, you know, just the gist of our conversation, just to, to what I was saying is, you know, he's in a nutshell. He was like, there are a lot of grownups that need a lot that we're youth walking around in adult bodies. Yes. And we need internal healing. So he was like, in terms of the youth work, he was like, that is the youth work that I'm doing because we are kids still in 35, 36, 40, 60 year old bodies. (laughs) And he's leveraging, you know, his his healing work, his food work, his diaspora work, you know, to so that we can heal internally. Yes. Because we're still operating as kids. Yeah. I mean, like you say it all the time, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of trauma and especially in this, you know, in this food space, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of trauma connected to the land. Yeah. And so what people need to realize is there's also healing in the land. Mm. There's healing in nature. Yes. You all can think that I'm a tree hugger. I really don't care. But I'm telling you right now, if you need, I love trees. I love plants because they have saved my life. Like until you try it, you, you, you honestly, you can't, there's nothing that you can tell me that can convince me of anything else. Like the air that we breathe, the, the trees that we look at, the, the flowers that we smell, all of this stuff is it has healing properties and we need to connect to that. Yep. You know? So I, I, man, I, I really appreciated that conversation with Shane. Yeah. And if you guys, I actually had the, the honor and privilege of meeting Shane last year when I visited Detroit the first time and I captured his, his story. So if you scroll, just keep scrolling on my Instagram page, you'll find his story there. And it is one that's really deep. Um, And I mean, even just aside from food, I mean, the whole housing crisis that happened in Detroit, you know, like his family was a part of that, you know, so and a lot of Detroiters, a lot of Detroiters. So when we're talking about food, we're talking about land, we're talking about just different. Mm -hmm. All of it is connected to land, Mm -hmm. you know, it is ownership rights ownership you know policy Mm -hmm. so it's it's so much but anyway shane is dope shout out to shane yeah um shout out to dylan's delight man yeah absolutely that does just i uh, got special history with jay dylan but that's another topic you that is another topic (laughs) that's another topic that is another topic but it was dope to be able to talk with shane in an iconic yeah for real you know absolutely um who else there's a couple more people passion oh man this woman right here i you know what i look up to her in every Every passion murray 
I think her photos were my favorite. Oh, like, they like no shade. Out gorgeous. No shade to anybody. No, because all the photos were awesome. The photos were shout out to myself. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, no, for real. But, for I'm real. Sorry, but not sorry. Yeah, no, not sorry. But her like she is when I look at her, I'm like, that's exactly how I want to be. For real. Like she is incredible. Like her name is is exactly who she is she like she's super passionate okay, so before okay so passion passion mary is the founder of detroit dirt which is a composting company um in detroit <clears throat> and she started it um when she was like getting scraps from like different places and you mm-hmm. know um collaborating and creating these partnerships um with various organizations to get their scraps yeah great soil yeah and this woman is doing it yeah. i mean she travels the country yeah she has like she has market and industry yeah. it's not just about like the compost is it is actually a lot about the compost itself yeah. because people need to understand like how good soil is important yeah. to our landscape and yeah. to our environment yeah <laughs> in so many regards yeah but she she's her her bitch she's like business savvy yeah that and too like oh like her she's whole demeanor dope. she's yeah. just so freaking dope like she's She's oh my goodness! She's had commercials made. Yeah, I mean, the, she's just doing the damn thing. Yeah. So, um, I once I, I stumbled upon her and I said, "We have got like what by any means necessary, we have got to meet Passion." And so we went to the Goodwill site. Yeah, which is one of her composting sites, mm-hmm. and we put on our goggles and she gave us a tour. And I held that compost in my hand, which was just like rich and black and she and was just smelling it gold. and i was smelling it because i love dirt. dirt yeah good soil yeah i'm all about it yeah um but passion is really doing some really great things um i love her style on top of everything yeah. else she like had, she like these super cute boots on and her hair was like braided Detroit dope <laughs> like i was just like girl you are killing it right now okay? and, she, and she deals with soil yeah. every day yeah but what i really appreciate about her in in her whole story like she comes from a line of entrepreneurs mm-hmm. so entrepreneurship is in her blood yeah um and you know climate conversations are always at the top of her agenda for Mm -hmm. her business she was Mm -hmm. like you can't have the conversation we can't have climate conversations without talking about soil or vice versa and she's also about humanity yeah about people like that was like the theme of our conversation she's like i'm about humanity yeah so i just felt like she's capturing you know her whole business model and her whole mission and just what she believes her principles um, I feel like she just has it all, you know, like entrepreneurship, you know, um, being connected to something that you love in, in um, sustainability mm-hmm. when it comes to sustaining yourself mm-hmm. through your work, you know, through partnerships. So it's it's a mirror of things. Um, and she's just wonderful. You know, when I think of her, I think of that term building from the ground up because mm-hmm. literally like that yeah. is what she has done yeah and she's still in the ground she's still in the doing ground. the work doing the damn thing yep so yeah shout out to passion shout out to passion murray um so one of my other favorites one of our last um i hope we didn't Did miss we anybody. talk about everybody sabrina 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 nelson man this lady <sighs> You know, she's the person that I want to be when I'm that age. <laughs> For real. So Sabrina is an artist. Yeah. I don't even know. Like she's she's an she's an artist. Like, yeah. She is an art. She is a bad artist. Badass. And it was so funny because when we were out in Eastern Market, when we met up with T, mm-hmm. we were chatting with T, and I saw Sabrina, not knowing who Sabrina was, and I just she just glowed. Yeah. And she looked at us and I remember her smiling because yeah. everybody in Detroit is just really nice and they smile and they speak and they say hello. Yeah. And I remember I remember her face. And then when I was on Instagram when we went back to the Airbnb, 
I saw somebody who looked like her and I was like, that's her. That was the outfit that she had on. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Instagram stalking. We all do it. Whatever. Yes, I we do. Her, yes, we do. <laughs> I sent her a message and I was just like, I just saw you. And she responded back. She was like, well, why didn't you say hello? And I said, I was in the middle of talking to someone doing an interview. And turns out that she was painting a mural um, in Eastern Market for the Eastern Market after dark hours, whatever event that they do. Yeah, love that photo. I yeah. actually saw those photos. Those photos are gorgeous. Yes, yeah. Sabrina's gorgeous. She is and, stunning. Um, even though she, she's an artist, but she also just told me about her vegan journey mm-hmm. and why she decided to go vegan. That's what I love about the diversity of these stories. Yeah. They're all so different. Yeah. And they all don't necessarily... They're not all necessarily about like being in a farm, growing food, yeah. you know, there's soil, there's healing, yeah. there's art, you know? Yeah. And so um, she she just started telling me about her vegan journey. She was like, I decided to go vegan because I pretty much didn't want to die of, you know, illnesses that yeah. were affecting my family members. Like that's why. And she's a very, she's very transparent too, which I appreciate. And she's not like your perfect vegan. She's not, a, it's not, it's not even about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and one thing that she said to me also, I'm sure to the both of us that she was, you know, talking to people and, you know, mingling people and, and um, around her mural is, you know, she was just like artists, and I know these aren't the exact words and I have the exact words because I have the audio, but Mm -hmm. you know, she was like, we are meant to express certain things through our artwork, Mm -hmm. especially things that are important to us issues that are important. Like she was like, it is our, you know, um, our, uh, our right, our duty to express these things through our artwork. Mm -hmm. And so on her mural, one of the, one of the people on her mural was actually Jessica care more More. yeah i love by the way yeah she's incredible tell them who she is for people that don't know (sighs) she is by the way guys sorry i'm melissa here with the edible activist podcast should have did that a long time ago my bad um broadcasting live at the line hotel i'm chatting with lita harrison visual artist and photographer we went to detroit back in september um for my edible activist tour campaign um to interview and document people of color in the food and farming space so we're just sharing a bit of our experience some of the folks who we interviewed and just what it was like being in that space Mm -hmm. because we freaking love Detroit yeah so Jessica is the founder of black women rock I think I got that right Mm -hmm. and she is a poet she is also an artist herself in her own right and if anybody has been to the African American Museum here in Washington, D.C., I've been four times and I need to go five more times. I still haven't seen the whole thing. Yeah. Um, she is actually, if you go to the very top floor, I feel like it's cultures and communities. I could have got that wrong, but it's the very top floor. As soon as you walk in at the very top and you hear like this woman just like with style and grace spitting out these wonderful words, that is Jessica. Mm-hmm. And that is my favorite favorite floor Mm -hmm. and I never knew that that was Jessica that's so dope that's incredible and she's just awesome like she supported my campaign got her a couple to like literally her and another one of her friends like walked over with me to the rental car and she was like yeah I want to support the campaign got her a couple shirts like she's and she's hilarious she is she's hilarious she is um but definitely check her out and she actually they have a show they're doing a show in Oakland Oakland man next which I'm bummed about because um no actually I think it passed oh I can't get my dates right but anyway she does have a show we're tired y'all yeah (laughs) right in Oakland for I can't remember the name of the organization anyway Jessica Caremore you guys probably know about her but she's awesome Mm -hmm. um so so yeah but Detroit was cool Detroit was an incredible, life-changing experience. Yeah. Definitely, you know, changed my perspective on Detroit as a whole and just people in general it, because the, you know, my biggest takeaway is authenticity and how important that is in whatever journey that you're in and, you know, giving yourself that space to be vulnerable and um, just 
opening yourself up to these experiences so that you can learn more and you can share more and it doesn't it becomes less about you but more about what you contribute to stay connected to everybody else so melissa i just want to say thank you for everything for your patience because i've been you know these photos have been quite the uh i mean you project like <laughs> But I, you know, it, it's better it, you than me. I mean, it's just <laughs> it, like I can't stress enough like the experience. And, you know, I had said last year, I was like, I want to do some type of photojournalistic project where, you know, I really explore something dif- different and I've been able to do that. So I really hope that, you know, we can continue this partnership and that it, you know, it just continues to grow from there. That's the goal. Can someone write us a check? Right. Please. Get a sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> real call. Real call. Uh, <laughs> your girl needs a new computer. <laughs> By the way, you need to get your computer fixed on Friday. Right. <laughs> I know Detroit was really great. We hope that you guys pulled and are pulling, you know, um, just the fullness of of the series um, as much as we are. Absolutely. And, you know, we I I did not take this this trip or this journey lightly at all. Yeah. And, you know, um, definitely want to change, you know, the narratives about Detroit from an outside perspective, because I'm telling you, even though there are a lot of like crazy things going in Detroit. It's the same. It's from city to city. You go to mm-hmm. any urban city. Like, you know, we were just in Philly, you know, same, same thing, same thing, you Different know, place. Yeah. Um, but these stories are really powerful. And um, just visit, visit Detroit. Like, it's a really cool place. It is. So and we look forward to sharing more. Um, look forward to sharing some of the stories that we pull from Philly. Soon yeah, too. Um, and we're just hoping that it travels take us other places yeah, as well. Absolutely. Um, so so yeah i think that wraps up everything i hope we did and there were so many different in-between experiences about detroit too i know there's some folks we missed like shout out to baba malik of yes. d-town farm shout out to shakir sawan day hey. who we met at d-town farms yes um please go check his story out um and it was really more so about like him teaching us about you know um beets and and farming and how the two connected and celebrating farmers and um so he's just what he taught me was like really cool so hopefully i get to go back and sit down and chat with him personally a bit more um but there was just so many other in-between experiences from like the food places we ate at just people showing us like mad love Love. um emily of say nice things about detroit like she was like our first and very very first encounter in detroit honestly it just set the tone for the whole trip Mm -hmm. any Anyway, I can go on. I'm not going to bore you. Um, but I love these conversations. So you will too. Yeah. Um, anyway, we're out. We're going to close. And um, yeah, so thanks everybody for tuning in. We're here live on Full Service Radio every Wednesday at 11 a.m. And you can access each episode after it airs at fullserviceradio.org. Be sure to follow me at Food Talks DC on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also remember to follow Lita, guys, because she's sharing these, these the photo series as well. Lark.pix. That's yes. L-A-R-K-E e. dot P-I-X. Okay. Yeah. Are you an edible activist? Of course you are. Um, I would love to interview you. So please reach out to me. You can send me a DM on Instagram. Um Email me, Melissa at GoodSoulEvents.com. I would love to have you on the show. But anyway, be easy, guys. Until next time. Peace. Peace. Thanks for listening to this program on Full Service Radio, broadcasting and recording from the Line Hotel in Adams Morgan, Washington, D.C. Full Service Radio programming can be accessed live and archived on fullserviceradio.org. Our talk programming is available on most podcast apps like iTunes and Stitcher, and our DJ sets are available on mixcloud.com slash fullserviceradio. Full Service Radio features over 30 weekly shows and over 50 local hosts covering every topic imaginable. If you want to be a guest or get involved, email us at info at fullserviceradio.org. Follow us on Twitter at Full Service RDO, on Instagram and Facebook at Full Service Radio. Thanks for listening.